Good evening, friends. I've been asked to show how I pour my rocks. So I'm going to start right now with our colors. I've got some orange, white, purple, pink, blue, and I've added a dark blue and some uh, Caribbean blue in there. We've got some yellow, gold, and black over here. These three are already mixed from an earlier pour today. And now I'm going to take my Floetrol and add that in. And there's, this is just eyeballing it. How much you think needs to go in there. Pour some, yes, I pour Floetrol into the white also. And it's almost half and half when I'm pouring on rocks. It's more three to one when I'm doing a canvas. And it depends on really how easy you want the paint to flow. There's no rhyme or reason. Well, not for me anyway. I just add till it feels right. All right, and then we take and we'll mix these up until they're good and mixed. We don't have any white flow trial showing in there. I'm tempted to pour it with the flow trial just half mixed in there. I may try that one day just to see what it'll do. Like I said, this is almost a one-to-one -one ratio of the flow trial and the paint. Most of this paint is apple barrel because I'm not trying to sell any of this at the moment. Maybe if I sold some, then I would use a heavier body paint. But for just me, this is fine. And you can see I've been, I'm using some of the old sticks. Just wipe those off, let that dry, and they do just fine. Just try to make up uh, use a dark color from before for a dark color that you're using now. This is the purple. I think we'll throw you over there. Let's see. Blue and green go together. This is going to take a little bit because of the way I do it. It may seem a little tedious as we get on into this. And it'll take me about 10 15 minutes or so to do this the way I want to. Make sure this is stirred up. This is part from earlier today. this is still stirred blended all right gold this gold has been around for a couple of weeks now I've just been adding to it some flow trial I've added a little bit of coconut milk I think on occasion to this cup I don't know how much would be left in it by now it is kind of thin Sort of. And let's 
just do the black. I also put Floetrol in the black. Now then, I've got all that mixed and I've picked out the rock I want and I've sat and looked at it and decided what kind of a character it has. A friend came over the other day and I told her that she needed to get to know her rock. So I handed it to her and she said, well, hello rock. And uh, that's pretty much what you need to do. Get to know all about your rock all the little divots and holes in it, the texture of it. The paint will sink, sink into this and it'll slow down in the big holes. It'll slide quicker on the smoother surfaces. And then on the sides, it may skip as it falls over, just like a waterfall. So now, I know what I'm gonna do with my rock. Let's Use a pour cup. And pour some paint in here. I'm gonna do two different pour cups. Now the last color out is your first color in. Or at least that's been my experience. I want something with a little pizzazz in it, a little pop. So we're going to put some pink. Sorry, I guess I need you on the other side. So I can show you. You can see I start out with just a very little bit at a time. And let's put a little the turquoise in there. Now we're going to start with some dark colors, just a little, not a lot. As you can see there, this is uh, just a little at a time. And black tends to take over, or at least it does for me, so I'm going to drizzle just a little off the stick in there. Just let it go where it wants to. I'm going to get a little gold in there. And the gold, to me, seems to leach the colors a little bit. When I say leach, it uh, helps them to migrate. And if you want them to, that's great. And if you don't want them to, that's not so great. A little bit of white. Let's see. And it's just whichever color calls out my name the loudest is the next one that gets to go in. And this may seem a little tedious doing one little bit at a time, but that's how I do it. Seems to work for me. And have to keep her paper towels handy. Not that I'm a neat freak, but don't want to get paint all over. And that should be plenty of 
black as you drizzle it in. It's like just trying to outline some of the colors. And the white I used to help migrate the colors, but it's easier than gold. quite a bit actually try and soften the blow just a little so it doesn't go so far down into the paint I don't know if it helps or not but it's how I do it and use the stick to just slow it down as it's falling kind of direct it where you want it to go So far, this is what we've got in there. And let's do a little yellow, just a little bit. And just whichever one calls my name the loudest. May not even see the yellow, but it'll affect the colors that it touches. start just pouring in real good here for a minute do I use silicone and coconut oil and water and glue and all that Sometimes it just depends on what the little voices are telling me. Sometimes they tell me, yep, that's enough. Sometimes they say, nope, that's not enough. Put some more in there. And I'm going to mix two cups, one's for the main pour, and the other will be for some swirls, or at least that's the plan for the moment. And we'll see how that works out. the white and a drizzle of turquoise and that's what I call drizzling when I just let it slide off the stir stick I'm pretty sure most people do A little more yellow in there. And gold is trying to be my friend again. So I'm going to let him play a little bit. That's enough. Now, those three I want over there. I believe I've got enough. You can see that it's about so high on the cup. That should be enough for this rock. And if not, I've still got some more that I can make up. And one more pour cup. And this time, we're going to pour in a little bit more, be a little more aggressive in the pouring. So this is going to be for my swirls, I think. And since 
I was asked about the stone with the fire on it, the orange and yellow. That's the kind of effect I'm going to kind of go for. Maybe it'll work. I don't know if I've tried to do more than one stone or canvas and get the same results to get the same results. Let me get a little white to drizzle in there. But we're going to find out. That's the best part about this, is trying something new. Now that I've got my Lazy Susan, got some stir sticks to hold down the freezer paper. And these also help to make the stone level. I do use a small level to see what my stone is doing. I like to try and start with a fairly level stone. It's not easy to make it exactly level, but you can find out where the levelest part is, and that's where I like to start. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to go up a little higher. Maybe one more. It don't always take three or four. Usually only takes one or two. But that's pretty good. But I can tell I'm not going to like that. Let's start over. And you can eyeball it to see what you like to. So we're gonna call that the most level, topmost part of the stone that we're gonna pour. I haven't treated the stone, all I've done is washed it off. Now I'm gonna take my cup of many colors and I'm gonna pinch, just like so. And then I'm gonna start pouring and we're gonna go from there. And I may start in a circular motion and then just go out from there. And I try not to go back over the same paint if I can help it. If I need to, I'll just let it drop off. And this is why I have the uh, Lazy Susan. You can see what kind of results I'm already getting there. All kinds of cells just popping out. All this is is flow draw. Get you over here a little closer. There we go. Now, when you're sitting here with your cup, try not to let it go back and forth because as you do, that rocking motion will help to muddy up the colors at the bottom. There we go. Sometimes you can't help but to get it over couple of times. Let you see what's going on there. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get these places that are easiest to get to. And just kind of fill them in. That's where that blue 
was dumped in. That's why I don't dump so much color in all at one time, not of one color. I like to drizzle it about so I get different kinds of action out of the colors. Okay. Now, you can see we've got some places over here that are bare. And it's on a vertical surface. Easiest way so you don't disturb the paint that's on top, take a stir stick, point it at it, and let it go. That's the easiest way I've found. And you can kind of follow it down a little bit. And over here, kind of point it first, pour it the, on the stir stick a little bit, just let it go. Don't worry about dropping some of the paint out there. It's not like you're not going to waste some paint anyway. Now, here we go. Here's one little place down here. That would be really hard to get to. And it's got all the paint it needs. Turn on around here. And this happens. So, and I'm trying not to rock my cup too much. Don't always work. So if it happens to you and gets a little muddy, just get another cup, mix some more paint, keep on going. Don't beat yourself up over what went wrong. Just enjoy what's going right. <clears throat> so far, I'm really pleased with this. You can get a smaller stir stick if you want to be more. Okay. Now I'm going around and looking to see what I might have missed. You can wipe off your stick every now and then if you want to. Remember to try and keep that nose pinched. Seems to work better that way for me. And sometimes you just have to let it go. Now then. Especially if it's on the underside that you can see. Just let it go up under there. And you want the same colors, but you're not going to really see that much unless people are going to be picking it up all the time, and they might. And I'll show you in another video how to take care of that, how to make the bottom look good, better than even if it's painted. All right, now, I'm going to try and save that, the rest of that, because I like that. Now, I store I've got quite a bit more in the cup there. So I'm going to store this at like a 45 degree angle over here on another table. And let's get in here kind of close for a second. You can see what all we got here. I don't know if I want to put a swirl in there or not. I just really don't think I do. Not on this one. As you can see, this is pretty cool just by itself. Just like that. So I believe I'm going to leave that one, but I will grab another stone here and we'll make a point to do just that, to put some swirls in. But I am going to torch this one. I do like to torch them just to help set the paint a little bit. And sometimes it'll bring out some more cells. Get along the sides. Keep the torch moving. Now, important part here is don't use the torch to get the stone too hot. 
because stones retain the heat when you've got the torch on them. And the uh, paint will fry and bubble. I did that before. It's bubbled on me and the paint failed in that one little spot. Uh, that rock has been re-poured since. So. so I'm liking the way this looks. See if we can get you over here a little closer. See how that changed? I liked it before, I like it even better now. And this is just with Floetrol. Like I said, the gold had, may have had some uh, hair, uh, coconut oil, or it may have had some silicone in it, but it's been mixed and mixed so many times that uh, I can't really remember. I really like that. I believe this is a keeper. Okay, so now you know how I pour my paint with at least a one-to-one -one ratio of paint to Floetrol. If you get the need inside of you, just put one drop of coconut oil into your pour cup, about a quarter, halfway of filling your pour cup. Uh, your pour cup, not the paint mixing cup. Just put one or two drops in there, fill it up, take your stir stick, stick it down in it, and make just a couple of passes with the short, uh, thin end of the stick, not the wide end. And if you really want to put the silicone in there, go ahead, just point it in, cover it, give it a little quick spritz, and then pray. But anyway, I'm going to use little handy dandy hair dryer it looks like it's already been poured too but this is years old some of you may remember that uh, I'm gonna try and give it a chance just to set a little bit more and you may notice underneath where paint is still dropping we're gonna touch those places just a little because that weight from that drop is going to help to move the paint on top. So I just gently touch it. Try not to, don't smear it. Just touch it and let it come off on your stir stick. Because if you do much more than that, you'll muddy up what's on the bottom. And then I'm looking along the bottom here. Now, since this isn't science, it's not perfect, so... Things are going to happen. But I'm just going to let this dry out for a little bit. And after I get done with this, I'll grab another stone. And I'll pour that and make sure that I can use these colors for a swirl. Or maybe some fire effects. Now I'll see you in a bit.